Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope you all had a great week. Today, we're diving into another short documentary, The Body Farm. A lot of you found this topic very interesting and so did I. So, here it is. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. How far would you go for knowledge? There is a threshold for every person, after which their moral standards and sense of humanity overcome curiosity and take control. However, every person has different mental limits and different amounts of curiosity, and for William M. Bass, these limits were quite obviously higher than the average humans. Bass, born in Stoughton, Virginia in 1928, is a forensic anthropologist. He is known for his expertise in human astrology, the study of bones, but also for another field of knowledge, somewhat more into the uncanny valley. Bass is an expert in human decomposition. His understanding of the human body has allowed him to work with the US and international authorities for the identification of human bones in crime scenes. A busy man from his youth, Bass got a master's in psychology and a PhD in anthropology but started his research as an archaeologist in Native American grave sites. He was hired by the University of Tennessee in 1971 to head their anthropology department. From the first year of his employment there, he conceived the biggest and most bizarre idea, but a very smart one at the least. Bass wanted to study human decomposition firsthand, and thus, in 1987, the Department of Anthropology, which Bass was now the chairman of, established the University of Texas Anthropological Research Facility. However, it came to be known with a far more sinister name, the Body Farm. The name is accurate in a very creepy way. Human bodies are left to rot, completely exposed to the elements, and the human eye. The Body Farm is located right behind the Department of Anthropology of the University of Tennessee, surrounded by a wire fence. The facility is about 16 acres of field, where on average about 50 bodies are decomposing all over the place. The project, although macabre, has a goal of helping researchers, law enforcement, and crime scene investigators understand decomposition in humans, and with different parameters affecting them in real times, to understand it a lot more. Interestingly, the idea was conceived in Bass's mind as he was collaborating with the police for a local murder case. A body what was found in a Civil War era grave was looking fresh, perhaps replacing the original inhabitant of the tomb to avert suspicions. However, judging by the person's clothing, Bass determined that this wasn't the case. He left the scene baffled about how little he knew about the decomposition process, and this is how the body collection first started. The first samples were given code names in order to avoid bringing attention to grotesque matter. It is haunting to know that the Freeman Ranch where the facility is located is a beautiful location itself, with a real farm owned by the university, for the purpose of studying animals. Other departments have also used the area for ROTC drills, ecological research, and field stargazing astronomy sessions. All of these are happening just a few kilometers away from the body farm with the exposed rotting bodies. The truth is that most of the people nowadays are dying in hospitals, and there is a great attention given into embalming them and applying makeup on the bodies, so they will be the most presentable for the mourning family and friends. After that, it is a tradition in the western world. The remains are cremated or buried in a casket underground. So very few people get to actually see them in an advanced, decomposed state. The living rarely can, or more importantly, wish to see what comes after death to the body. For most of us, even the idea of something like that is unnatural and sometimes outright scary to the human mind. It might have to do something with facing our own mortality, or that the idea a person, perhaps a beloved one in life, can look so disgusting after death. Antonius Robin, an anthropologist specializing in religious beliefs and traditions surrounding death, reminds us that there is not even one human culture that doesn't have a ritual involving death. Even when people feel like the person inside 
completely non-existent anymore, they always show great care about sustaining the integrity of the body. And yet, about five to six bodies are donated every month to the body farm. They are photographed, measured, and sampled, and then left outside to rot, stimulating different scenarios. Some of them are left in the heat, others in the shade, to test how decomposition advances in different temperatures. There is a constant monitoring and logging of the weather as well, as all the parameters that might affect the process. The smell of decay is there, a mixture of wet rot and rancid meat. But admittedly, it is not unbearable. The sight, however, is the thing that most outside viewers can't stand. The first stages especially look the most gruesome to the untrained eye. With the heart not beating anymore, causes the cells to not be able to sustain themselves as usual, so they begin to rupture, forcing skin slippage. At the same time, the bacteria start feeding on the human carcass. This feeding frenzy leads to the second stage. As the bacteria begins to consume the body, they decompose them into simple gases, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and methane, which causes the body to bloat to great extents. The bacteria also release sulfur as they process their food, giving the body that yellow color. At this point, flies also arrive at the scene and lay eggs in any exposed cavity of the body, which hatch in about two days, and start to feed on the body itself. Because the head has the most cavities, it is usually eaten first, creating a weird image of a black skull with eaten out features attached to the human carcass. After three days, the bloating usually stops as the skin finally bursts open from the tension, releasing the fluids and gases accumulated all along. The mixture that pours out is so rich in nitrogen that it literally creates a halo of dead vegetation around the body. Although, for a future generation of plants, it acts like the best fertilizer, eventually creating a thriving plant life for about a year later. After the maggots create a Lovecraftian looking carpet over the carcass and eat most of the flesh, it begins the longest stage of decomposition, which is advanced decay. The results depend on different parameters, with temperature playing the lead role. Bodies left in the sun usually mummify, but once in the shade, continued to be consumed. It takes about six months to a year to be left with only bones and scraps of skin, which are then cleaned and placed in a bone collection for the facility for further research. This is the final stage and is named dry decay. The remains now only barely resemble a human. Although grotesque and uncanny, the research has shown that the decaying body is a highly complicated ecosystem. For example, some of the bacteria release substances that attract insects whose saliva is deadly for other competing bacteria. And of course, the insects themselves attract mice, and according to the food chain, larger predators. This complex system has gained the term necrobiome. The main use of the project is to understand the postmortem intervals. That is the time that has elapsed from death until the current day. This could be a leading clue in many murder mysteries. This is part of the reason that after the original body farm opened in 1978, five more have been created in the American ground, to study the process in different climates. Bass's vision is that in the future, crime investigators can sample bacteria DNA from the crime scene, and based on the concentration of the species, will be able to tell the time of death with greater accuracy. In the future, they are planning to also have an airborne chemical composition of the ground analysis, performed via drone. Possible anomalies in a large-scale area could narrow the search for missing people to a much smaller place. The researchers are also participating in the training of canine units, trying to see what chemicals of the decomposing body do the dogs smell, so that they can try to focus the investigations to them. Still, with all the undeniable benefit that this gruesome research brings, it still feels alien and at times even wrong to some. There is something inherently out there, out of place, with the idea of people's remains being used as guinea pigs, not receiving the peace they deserve after passing away and becoming a free feast for vultures and maggots. And yet, there are tenths of bodies donated to the body farms each year. Why is that? Well, the first reason is that some people wish to contribute to science after death, and unlike hospitals or tradition organ donation, the body farms have no prerequisitions for the bodies. Everything is accepted 
and the variety only adds to having a bigger database. Also, some donors are following the natural burial movement, which goes against embalming and using steel caskets to keep the body intact. On the contrary, leaving a body to the farm allows its nutrients to be quickly absorbed and returned to the earth. And of course, the more cynical but also realistic reason, an average burial in the US cost about $7,000, which for some is an unreachable price. In full contrast, the Texas Potty Farm, for example, offers free pickups for nearby bodies. Daniel Westcott, a renowned researcher in the Body Farm of Tennessee, states that you sort of get desensitized to the whole thing the more you do it. It is similar to doctors being able to handle death and loss in a more calm and calculated manner than most of us. However, he and his team try to always remember that these bodies are more than just a tool or a sample source. They were once living people with family and friends, and should always be treated with the respect they deserve. But no matter what has been said so far, it is certainly eerie that there are farms of rotting corpses, where bodies of once lively people are left to rot in the public eye. In a way, it violates some of our most sacred traditions and beliefs since the ancient times. We feel so uneasy at the face of death that we try to avoid it whichever way we can. So, the thought of having hundreds of human remains decaying away right next to us makes us feel extremely uneasy. But who knows? Maybe to some, it sparks a new flame of curiosity. How do humans return to the soil from where they came from? On another note, a new burial method has actually been people going into a pod. You are planted into the ground and you actually become fertilizer for a tree. It's pretty unique. I will definitely link some links below for that if you want to check it out. To be honest, I kind of want to be buried that way myself. I hope you enjoyed this. It is very informal and very gruesome at the same time, but definitely needed for research. I hope you all have a good night. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.